Well, uh, first I'd like to thank Inova for allowing me the opportunity to speak today and, and all of you for coming to actually sit down and suffer through all of this to get to the token English speaker at the end of the day. Um, to explain PBES, uh, it's an interesting story. For those of you who do or don't know, I was the founder of the first megawatt scale battery company called Corvus Energy. And Corvus started in about 2009, 2010. And we grew that business to be the dominant player within the marine industry within about four or five years. Um, but as it happens in many companies, through the growth, there's development of different philosophy. And my board of directors and myself had very different philosophies come 2014. And so the net result was that in May of 2014, they decided to fire me. Um, which is not a good experience when you're the founder of a company and it's your passion and it's your baby and you, you want to bring it to success. And we have brought Corvus to a, a, a pretty good level of success in 2014. So I'm a persistent guy though and very determined to make my mark on this industry if you like. So I started Plan B. My Plan B is PBES. And in many ways, uh, uh, an opportunity to start with a clean slate and not make the mistakes of your past. Uh, for those of you who don't know, again, my history, I'm a professional boat builder. And one of the things that we challenge ourselves in the boat building industry, because we make a lot of mistakes, is we say you're allowed to make every mistake once. Because there's so many mistakes to make, why would you want to do the same thing twice? Uh, so Plan B storage, or PBS, is if you want uh, a comment on let's do it better the second time around. Now, I am going to, uh, I always try and share a little bit of my cultural voyage as we move our company to Norway and I learn more and more about this wonderful country that you guys have and find my place in it. And sometimes I talk about things like traffic and things like that, but today I found a video clip that is more of an observational element, if you want, of how outsiders are represented to Norway. So there's about a 30 second video clip here I'd like to share with you guys. This is planet Earth and this, this is Norway. Many people think that Norway is the capital of Sweden. So if you think so right now, you are wrong. Since ancient time, Norway has survived on fish, potatoes, rocks and plundering. And then in the 1960s, we invented the oil. We gave up rocks and plundering, but we still like fish and potatoes. The invention of oil has in many ways laid the foundation of today's society. You, you can... There is some accuracy to this video. Uh, it's actually about a three minute video. If you look on YouTube for it, you will find it and it talks to dancing and culture and everything else. But. The relevance to me was uh, the comments about the oil industry. We invented the oil. Um, and it, to a certain degree, in terms of transitioning Norway from one type of economy to an extraordinarily wealthy economy, it's true. Uh, the success that Norway has achieved in the last 50 years ha is largely a result of taking advantage in, in possibly the best possible way at every turn of the oil and gas industry and participating in the growth of that globally. What we're seeing now, it's kind of like electric cars at the same time. Um, in Canada, we have, everything is very far apart. So everything is forever away. So you're always worried about range anxiety with an electric car. You never think you're gonna get where you're gonna go. So buying an electric car is a real challenge. Today, I think Norway is going through its own range anxiety about what is the next pillar of the economy that's gonna have to support this country for the next 50 years and allow the prosperity that you've already achieved not to be a short-term issue, but to become something that's very long-term. And what I'm here to talk about a little bit, and I won't spend a lot of time on it, is the idea that energy storage, or energy solutions, as I'm starting to call our business, is one of those pillars that is going to supplement and support the oil and gas industry as we all see the next 50 years, and I hope is gonna take away your range anxiety about what the future for your families and your children and your children's children are. So we'll talk a little bit about that as we go through. So the climate neutrality by 2030, this is a, a published goal from the Norwegian government. And I really appreciate and respect when people make these kind of statements and expectations. 
this is a North Star. This is something for all of us to achieve. As we all see in the world, things change. If you look at the politics in the United States in the last three months to what we're dealing with today, that North Star is still there, but it's changed the metric of the path of how we're going to get there. Um, and when you look at the marine industry, you know, the problem, the, the issues that we face is that we're now starting to see how much damage is represented by the marine industry to the environment. Um, and I'll tell you comfortably, I'm not good at speaking to slides, so I just sort of talk. Um, and I apologize if that uh, doesn't coincide with this all the time. But the problem we all have is that we've become more aware of the environment. We've become more aware of what we can do to positively impact the environment on an individual basis. We all separate our garbage, we recycle, we do what we can, we buy electric cars. These are things that are within our constraints to make real change in the world. What we're now starting to see as the capacity for things like energy storage is increasing into the megawatt scale range is that we are starting to recognize that the bigger problems, the things that really represent environmental damage, are not necessarily within our individual grasp to solve and change. And the marine industry represents one of the biggest problems in the world because most of the pollution that it generates you don't see. It's all done offshore. And they're using heavy fuel oil because it's cheap, but it produces a tremendous amount of pollution. Um, to the point where if all of you understood the amount of damage that's created by container ships traveling across the ocean, you'd be horrified. But even within the constraints of our ports, our cities, uh, whether it's a cruise ship, whether it's a ferry, the amount of socks and knocks and everything else that gets emitted into the environment is incredibly bad for what we do. But the world is not famous for doing anything about anything unless it makes financial sense, unless we can positively impact the bottom line of all the companies who participate in this industry today. And one of the things I love about energy storage is that's what it does. Now, you're just going to see, if you want, some slides up here that represent what are some of the effects, what are the problems that we face. But when you think about it, if we can present a solution to the world that shows environmental payback, shows fiscal payback, and does it within the constraints of how businesses operate today, what we're really doing is focusing on presenting the opportunity for businesses to improve their bottom line, to become more competitive, embrace technologies, and I don't like calling them technologies, embrace products that represent the next generation of what we're doing. This, this one kills me. Ships, number one smog contributors in the world, no matter what you add up in the world, it does not add up to the marine industry. That is something everybody should take home today and understand. And this also. Last year, I was amazed to find there was a pollution alert in, Be in Bergen that was equal to that of Beijing. Wow. You take something as pristine as that, what this means is these problems are not in China anymore. These problems are here. These problems are in Europe. They're in North America. They're everywhere that we work. And the challenge is if we don't address these problems, it's not going to get any better. The pollution in China has a much effect as Norway as the pollution in Canada has on Canadians. So you're destroying your oceans by letting them become the filter for all of the pollution that's produced. That affects fishing. That affects our lives. So the world is round, I like to say, and everything impacts everything. And what we have to do is understand that we have to address these solutions, not necessarily just on a bottom line basis, that's really important, but we do have to address these solutions with the context of improving the quality of our lives. And not just our lives, but our kids' lives. So you look at these slides that are coming up now. Um, they're mostly centered around the concept of what we've produced in the last few years, between what I did at Corvus and what I'm doing now at Plan B or PBS. And to a large degree, these solutions are operating in your waters or in Danish waters. And they have had not only a material impact on the routes that they operate on, but they're one of the reasons why we're all standing here today. So you're not embracing energy storage because it's good for your social conscience. I, I'd like to think we all do that, but I know fra practically from doing this for a few years, that's not the case. We are embracing energy storage solutions because they do make money and they do improve the environment. And because they do that and they happen to deliver an improvement in the quality of our lives, they have become inevitable, okay? When we started up with the Ampere project back in 2010, that project, uh, oh my God, it was, a, it was like birthing a hippo. 
Um, but it was a committed group of people who dedicated themselves to executing the Ampere, and the Ampere is the cornerstone and the launching point for every ferry that's being delivered this year and next year in Norway. You know, our company has gone through a, an incredibly uh, short transition from an idea to something that's producing batteries today here in Trondheim. Uh, and it has been a challenge. I will tell you comfortably, I don't think I've ever done anything as difficult as bring PBES to life. But the truth is, the marketplace is, is there for us. The government is there for us. You as a society are there for us. Everybody wants to improve the environment and what we do. Uh, and the important part about that is that it's not going to stop. This is going to inevitably displace or optimize fuel-driven technology for the next 10, 20, 30 years. I think comfortably by 2030, there will be fewer fuel-driven ferries than there are electric ferries. There will be fewer fuel-driven tugboats than there are electric tugboats. And it's simply because it's gonna make sense. It's gonna reduce your cost of taking a ferry. It's gonna reduce the cost of shipping equipment all around the world. Um, and yet the interesting part about it is it's not a commodity solution. Each one of these projects has a unique answer, whether it's the size of the battery or whether it's how we charge the batteries. The Ampere is unique in that the batteries on board that boat are charged from batteries on the shore because you're at the tip of a fjord and getting a big power line out there is really expensive. It was a lot cheaper to put the batteries on the shore, let them charge while the vessel goes back and forth, and then in short bursts, dump the energy back into the vessel so that it can continue to operate as if it were fuel driven. That's kind of fun. Then you look at something like the scan lines. 1.1 million kilograms of fuel per year savings. That's no joke. There's four of those boats operating today. So we have taken, depends on how you measure fuel impact, somewhere between 2,400 and 3,000 cars of damage away from this. In two years, we fully expect that the Scanlines project is going to fully electrify all of those boats and its port and become a zero emission platform to demonstrate to the world what technology really can do. Um, these are just some other pictures. You guys are probably all familiar with the Caroline. Most efficient fishing vessel in Norway today, electric. It has a battery, it has a generator on board to charge it, but they can run up to 24 hours on battery. The crew no longer has to smell diesel fuel all the time. There's no more vibration from the engines. It is a completely different platform to fish off of. And it's something that is gonna happen all across Norway, whether we're talking fishing boats or fish farm boats, but even vessels of this size are economically feasible and make, it make sense to do what we do today. Um, you talk about now some other of the projects that are coming up here in Trondheim, fast cats, okay? Five years ago, people told me fast cats could never be powered by batteries. Well. What's happening today is the energy density of the battery, so the battery technology, if you want. It's kind of like Intel in 1984 with laptops. Every six months, you were seeing a huge improvement in the chips that were driving the computers, and they allow better video and better graphics and better performance. What's happening in energy storage today, and it's been a 25-year evolution to deliver what's happening today, I'll comfortably say that, is that whether we talk energy density or whether we talk cycle life, the battery technology is improving leaps and bounds. So what we did last year with a 75 amp hour cell in the same space, in the same mass, we're gonna deliver next year 150 amp hours. We're gonna double our energy density. This year alone, we've increased our cycle life by 50%. That's a massive saving. So even if the cost of the battery doesn't go down as quickly as we want, when you increase its performance capabilities like that, you reduce the overall cost of the solution. Uh, one of the features of the PBES solution is that when we did this, we looked at the idea of how can you deliver something that's absolutely safe? Because we all know lithium batteries are as dangerous as anything could possibly be. They're banned on aircraft. You can't use a Samsung phone if you fly. There's lots of challenges that are very real today in the chase of the most cost economic value add solution. They, they built a cheap battery on the Samsung phone and they're paying for it by having no market for their product right now. So we have to always balance off cost versus performance versus safety versus management. Um, in our battery systems today, we were the first people in the world to create a battery that can't catch fire. So we looked at the challenges that the commercial marine industry had 
the issues that we face in terms of performance and said we can't even build a battery company again or a battery product unless we can comfortably address those in a platform that's going to last 25 or 30 years. So the PBES solution was in effect designed by the NMA. It was designed by Siemens and ABB and uh, Rolls-Royce and all of our customers who kept saying if you're going to bring something to the table it has to bring passenger safety first and then it has to bring performance and reliability and quality and once you have all of that together now we have to focus on making it cheap as we possibly can without compromising any of the values that brought us to the place that we are at today so knowing comfortably that you can run a battery at 300 percent of its rated capacity all the time without risk of catching fire is something that is going to become an industry standard for what you're going to see in the marketplace over the next few years. Uh, now we're talking a little bit about why Norway as well. Everybody asked me the question, why would you bring a business to Norway? My first question is why not? You know, what you guys represent in terms of a, a location for business, small population, huge passion, 100% commitment to getting the job done and a willingness to do things nobody else in the world will do. It's cool. Um, here, we do lead the way. And something I stress to people in Norway, because I, th I don't think you give yourself enough uh, appreciation for what Norway is and the platform that it is, is that this is the place where we will lever the world. We will change how people think, even Mr. Trump. So. Guys, I'd just like to thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Uh, really appreciate the opportunity, and if you guys have any questions, please ask me after the show.